Jesus. All right. What a good day. God has made a beautiful day, hasn't he? <laughs> and we're rejoicing and glad in it. Hallelujah. We're going to start again today in the book of Luke. We're going to go back to where we were at. And um, we're going to look some more at this because we have not finished it. Um, Luke chapter 15. If you'll turn with me there this morning. We're going to go back to our story of the prodigal son. All right. And we're going to look here at what the father gave him when he came to himself. Amen. When he realized the, the light bulb came on. Amen. And he decided, hey, I remember my father. I remember I'm of his household. I remember what my father had. Amen. I remember who my father is. I remember my connection to my father. Amen. And so when he comes back, the father wasn't mad, was he? Oh, the father was actually so excited he ran <laughs> to meet him, didn't he? And then he begins to do what? He begins to clothe him, doesn't he? <laughs> All right. So we looked at the robe, and we talked about the meaning, the metaphysical meaning of the robe. And we talked about how that means the truth. Amen. The ro robe speaks of the truth. The uh, it's, it's the truth in its harmonious expression, harmony, oneness, unity. We talked about how that, you know, that the robe of Jesus could not be divided, right? Okay, speaks of the truth. It cannot be divided. It cannot be, you know, split. It is harmonious. It works in as one, all right? The truth in its harmonious expression, all right, an unchangeable perfection right so we talked about that we talked about how Elisha took that robe that mantle and split the waters and the priesthood when we look back in the book of Joshua and they went across Jordan what happened that they spoke of the priesthood speaks of the covering for the people okay and when they stepped into the waters what did it do it rolled back death or Jordan back to Adam so it splits the waters I mean it splits and divides right the truth from falsehood all right shows us a clear path so the robes the robe speaks of the truth all right the unchangeable undivisible truth it's it's union and unity amen and we've talked about the ring just kind of a review here show you how it all rolls together fits together works together amen and so the ring, we talked about how it speaks of devotion, right? And infinite or infinity. We talked about how that it talks about um, limitlessness, all right? We talked about how it talked about, it speaks of eternity, right? Eternal, eternity. All right, it speaks of wholeness. All right, he has made a wet man, a well man ever wet whole on the Sabbath day, all right, we talked about how he speaks of perfection and how that we are already, he, what did he do in Hebrews? It says he has already perfected those that he sanctified. Woo, and he's already sanctified according to Hebrews, all right. So that's what the ring speaks of, right? So we find these steps which um, he shows us here, and what does he do? He begins to put shoes on his feet, right? So now he's going to cover the feet, all right? So um, our shoes in the Greek at 62.55, hupodemia or something like that. <laughs> I was trying to pronounce it this morning. It's kind of strange. But anyway, something bound under the feet or bound around, you know, it's this or the sole. We talked about those things. But um, it, I want to turn first to Exodus chapter 3, okay? So if you'll turn with me there, and we're going to look about what the shoes are representative of. Exodus chapter 3. God sends Moses to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. And he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. 
And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. Now, this eternal flame, eternal fire represents God. Amen. We can read down in verse 6. He says, And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Right? So we know that God speaks to him out of this burning bush, doesn't he? He says, I am that I am. You read on down, you know, and all these things. So we see this eternal flame, eternal fire. We see God. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw not nigh hither. Okay. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet. For the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And there we find in Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. So now we have Moses, and we see this eternal flame. We see this God, right? We see God. And he said, okay, Moses, come not near till you take those shoes off because it's holy ground. So we have something going on here. Let's see what we got here. Now, when we look at the metaphysical meaning of the shoe, all right, it represents the words with uh, which understanding or truth is clothed. The words with which understanding or truth is clothed. And when holy ground or substance in its spiritual wholeness is approached by man, he must put off from his understanding all limited thought. Whoa. Kind of gives it a deeper meaning there, doesn't it? Yeah. He must get under, he must put off from his understanding all limited thought about the absolute or about God. How many you know we limit God, don't we? <laughs> How many times do we limit God? Amen. Uh, we get in situations and we don't pray because we don't really believe, right, that he can take care of that situation. Or we, we pray that he can only do so much. Right? We, 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 hey, we find the disciples did the same thing, didn't they? When they were on, on the boat, what did they do? They're crying out, we're going to die, Jesus, wake up. Limiting him. Amen? We do it without even thinking a lot of times. We limit him. Um, if we can just believe what, see, even when they went into the promised land, did they limit him, didn't they? You know, oh, we went into this land. And, man, you should look at these grapes we're carrying. It takes two of us to carry out one cluster of grapes. Man, you should have seen. This is a milk, and it's, I mean, a land, and it's flowing with milk and honey. Ooh, it's a good land. But there's giants in the land. Their focus was on the natural, on the giants, instead of on how big their God was. Amen. Amen. He said, I've already went into the land before you. I have already taken control of that land. I've already defeated every giant. All you got to do is go in. But they did not really believe it, did they? No. They limited God. We do the same things without thinking. Amen. We don't always believe him to full. Sometimes we believe him, but it's just not to the full extent that he can be trusted and believed. Amen. <laughs> We only believe he can do this much when he could do anything. Amen. He could do everything. He created all things. Is he not able also to take care of all things, right? Pastor G, it looks like you got a comment. <laughs> it just crossed my mind because I've experienced it. Sometimes it's not it's it's like combined with it's not just not believing in God, it's not believing that we have enough belief to believe in God for it. 
you go. <laughs> I have enough belief to believe. That's right. Hey, that sounds that's good. <laughs> Profound ex yeah, wisdom there. <laughs> but we 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 tend to limit because we tend to do as humanity does, and that's to look at the natural. I mean, we look at what we see, you know, around us. We listen to what we, you know, hear reports that are uh, negative, limited. Amen. We hear, uh, we 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 feel, um, we s we smell, you know, all these these things, these senses things that gets us in trouble if we if we allow that to override what we know about the spirit. Amen. About God. Amen. We have to reach beyond what we see and and and, and believe and, and feel and hear and, amen and and reach out and believe that God's bigger amen we got to believe that he's bigger and he's better he's able he is wants to take care of us amen it was an Elisha that was uh him and his armor bearer that was surrounded by uh, that great Syrian army and it looked impossible that they all came for him, for Elisha, one man. They sent an army. But what did we find out? He said, God, because his armor bearer was crying, there's no way, you know, we're, we're, we're trouble, you know. <laughs> there's a problem here. And Elisha cried out to God. He said, just show him, open his eyes and let him see. <laughs> we find then that his eyes were open. We find this, he sees this great host surrounding this Syrian army. You know, God is bigger. Amen. What does they always say when when man draws a circle? Believe it, God makes a bigger circle. <laughs> Amen. God is bigger. I don't always go back to that one song. God is bigger than all my problems. Bigger than all my fears. Amen. He's bigger than anything. Any mountain that I can or cannot see. Praise the Lord. God is bigger. I do too. <laughs> But we have to not limit him, see? And that's the problems that we have. If we can quit limiting God, if we can simply believe that he is the I am and that he is able and that he wants to provide and take care and to bless. Amen? If we can just believe this, amen, fully to the fullest extent. Because I, I think we believe it to a degree. <laughs> But we've not allowed, we've not, in one place in Isaiah, he says, move the tent stakes, move them out, expand them. Ex yeah. We've got to expand our thinking, expand our, our understanding. Amen. We've got to expand, amen. Whew, allow for expansion. Praise God. But he says, take your shoes off from your feet. All right? Remove that limited thinking. All right? Don't limit God because God is able to do abundantly exceedingly above what i can ask or think amen he's able to do all these things amen so this is what this is what it speaks of is that uh, the shoes it speaks of that truth i mean the words i mean with which understanding is all right the truth is clothed all right oh whew. we got to get rid of limit thinking i want to turn on over to exodus chapter 12 because we have god sending moses to egypt we see the we see this uh, bush that's burning. We see Moses and taking his shoes off. And we see God says, I am. We could read on down there. Uh, we're not going to do that. But you can read it on down. He says, I am that I am. I am whatever you need me to be. I am. And I can do all things. Amen. Uh, we find that in Exodus, he begins to speak about the shoes again. Um, and he says, uh, this is talking about the Passover. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt. Now that Egypt speaks of bondage. The iron furnace in one place he calls it. But it's the it's bondage, okay? This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Alright, so they're going and we're gonna find here they're gonna start a journey. Alright. And it shall be to the first month of the year to you. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take unto him a man of a land. You can read on down. Um, and if you read it on down, he says, mm, I just want to pick it up in verse 11. And thus shall you eat it. He's talking about the sacrifice. And they're, they're going to eat before they leave, right? But he goes on, he says, you shall eat it with your loins girded. All right. I mean, we're to gird up the loins of our mind and be sober and be vigilant for our adversary, the devil. 
he comes about trying to what devour us all right and how does he devour us through our five natural senses i mean the senses realm amen through what see hear smell taste and touch so he's telling him, he says gird up your mind you got a journey all right you're going to have to take this journey all right it's not always easy but you're going to take this journey all right gird up your loins and your put your shoes on your feet all right so now we're going to put your shoes on the feet because now we're going to come out from bondage okay and he says and have your staff in your hand now we know the staff is for correction it's for counting the sheep it's for you know bringing the sheep bringing back in with a little hook and we, it's help you know it's, it's it speaks of our bible it's really type and sh shadow of our bible so here we are we're on our journey all right back to the understanding of our father all right um so if we get on down he'll, he says i'll pass through the land of egypt this night i will smite the firstborn in the land of egypt he's gonna start getting rid of those things that hinder and stand in the way all right I want to go to Deuteronomy 33. And we find here that Moses is blessing Israel. All right. And he's starting to speak a blessing over each one of the sons. All right. We're not going to read all of those. But I want to look at Asher. All right. Now, Asher means happy. Ooh. <laughs> And he says in verse 24, and of Asher, he said, let Asher be blessed with children. Let him be acceptable to his brethren and let him dip his foot in oil. Okay. Thy shoes shall be as iron and brass as in thy days. So shall thy strength be. Okay. So now this, this shoes here shall be as iron and brass now he's talking about this land of of asher being like a stronghold uh, strongly fortified um enclosed with iron and brass okay um and as thy days and it and prosperous also when you look at the oil and all these things and you dip in his foot in the oil it's talking about prosperous and blessings and how many know the joy of the Lord, when we talk about happiness and joy, and we talk about, you know, him blessing us, his shoes as iron, and his, it goes on, he says, so shall thy strength be. Now, an interesting thing, when we look at Caleb, when he got into the land, he said, you know what, I want that mountain. I want that mountain. I've looked, I've thought about that mountain since we were here to spy out the land 40 years ago, and I want that mountain. And he says, my strength has not abated it has not leaked you know has not wasted away i'm still as strong today as i was 40 years ago and i can take that land i can take that mountain and we find that he does amen and this is kind of a representation of what he's talking about with asher your strength uh, so shall thy strength be as it was in your youth shall I, so shall it still be in your old age all right we could read over in Isaiah 40 where he says, he says, to they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Woo! They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. Shall walk and not faint. See, if we find the happiness, if we find the joy, if we find, if we understand that it's his life in this fortified city, if we fortify it, right, if we fortify it, all right, we find the joy, we find the peace, we find the blessings, we find, all right, all these things. And so we find these shoes, that's why he's talking about the shoes, all right, speaking of truth. So just kind of touching a little bit on the Old Testament, some shoes. I'm going to go on now to the New Testament. Um, Luke chapter 13, I'm uh, sorry, Luke chapter 3, verse 16. That's where I want to go to now. Luke chapter 3. Now John the Baptist is preaching. He says something pretty interesting here. Let's see. Um, where do we want to start? 
And as the people were in expectation, let's see, John the Baptist preaches in verse 15, he says, As the people were in expectation, and all men mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Christ or not, John answered, saying unto them, All I indeed baptize you with water, but one mightier than I cometh, the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire, whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner. But the chaff will he burn with fire unquenchable. Now, the latchet of whose shoe I am not worthy, all right, not worthy to unloose. And if you was to read in the Amplified, it would say even as his slave. And to find out, it comes, it, it, it actually, to unloose the latchet of the shoe was one of the things that the slave would do. Would unloose the, you know, unloose the latchet of the shoe, take it off, wash the feet. Amen? So he says, I am not even worthy of that. It almost reminds me of our prodigal son story, who comes to the understanding of, his father and who he is and he says you know what i'm not even worthy to go back i'm not even worthy father i'm not even worthy to be a slave but if you would just take me back even as a slave see what i'm saying see he, he is he is looking at the truth jesus christ the way the truth the life and he says you know i'm not even worthy i'm not even worthy amen Whew. How lie. Praise the Lord. Turn with me to Luke chapter 7, 44. All right. <coughs> Luke 7 and verse uh, 44. Let's look. Mm -hmm. We see, well, let's see. Jesus forgives a sinful woman. We find out that it's Mary. She's washing his feet. But we look here. When Pharisees desired that he would eat with him, verse 36, one of the Pharisees decided, desired him that he would eat with him, and he went to the Pharisee's house and sat down to meet. And behold, a woman in the city, which was a sinner, when she knew that Jesus sat at meat in the Pharisee's house, brought an alabaster box of ointment, and stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash his feet with tears, and did wipe them with the hairs of her head, and kissed his feet, and anointed them with the ointment. Now when the Pharisee, which had bidden him, saw it, he spake within himself, saying, This man, if he were a prophet, would have known who and what manner of woman this is that touched him, for she is a sinner. Interesting. I thought they were all under sin. <laughs> under that old law. <laughs> of course, <we're>, yeah. <laughs> anyway. And Jesus answering said unto him, Simon, I have somewhat to say unto thee. And he saith, Master, say on. There was a certain creditor which had two debtors. The one owed five hundred pence and the other fifty. And when they had nothing to pay, he frankly forgave them both. Tell me therefore, which of them will he love most? And so Simon answered and said, I suppose he to whom he forgave most. And he said unto him, Thou hast rightly judged. But we go on, he says, And he turned to the woman and said unto Simon, Seest thou this woman? I entered into thine house. Thou gavest me no water for my feet. Hmm. Reminds me of the verse of scripture where he says, Wash me by the water of the word. The water, amen, by the water. All right, but she hath, wa she, she hath washed my feet with tears and wiped them with the hairs of her head. Thou gavest me no kiss, but this woman, since the time I came in, hath not ceased to kiss my feet. Ooh, my head with oil thou didst not anoint, but this woman hath anointed my feet with ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven, for she loved much. But to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And so he says unto her, thy sins be forgiven. So we know the feet, the feet, all right, what were the feet, okay? The words, okay, we talked about the shoes, uh, represents the words with which understanding or truth is clothed. So we feed, find that the feet are, speak of truth, right? And understanding. All right? 
So we find here that she washes his feet. She washes his feet, cleans his feet. To clean. So this walk, the feet also and the shoes also can speak of travel, the journey. We've talked about the journey. Amen. And how harsh it can be and dirties your feet and walking in car carnality. How it can dirty your feet. But we find here she's washed because she's so loved. Amen. And we find here how that they didn't give him any waters for feet. They did not take care of that. We, they, they didn't understand the very basic principles of it, actually, because we're going to go to Luke 13, and we're going to look some more, and Jesus is going to show us um, what he did now. I, she's got him prepared, all right? She's got him prepared. Now let's look and see in Luke 13. We find Jesus, all right? John, if I get in the right book of the Bible, <laughs> John 13, Luke 13. Yeah. I said Luke, didn't I? But John 13 is what I should have said. <laughs> I started reading Luke, and I thought, that's not right. <laughs> John, John 13, yes. And it's just titled, Jesus Washes His Disciples' Feet. Now before the feast of the Passover... When Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he was come from God and went to God, he riseth from supper, laid aside his garments, and took a towel, and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin, and began to wash the disciples' feet, and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter saith unto him, Lord, dost thou wash my feet? <laughs> Jesus answered and said unto him, What I do thou knowest not. Now, but thou shalt know hereafter. Peter saith unto him, Thou shalt never wash my feet. But Jesus answered him, If I wash thee not, thou hast no part with me. Simon Peter saith unto him, Lord, not my feet only, but also my hands and my head. And Jesus saith unto him, <laughs> He got the idea then, he better do it. <laughs> He that is washed needeth not save to wash his feet, but is clean every whit. And you are clean, but not all. And not all he's speaking of was one amongst them, whose heart is not right. For he knew who should betray him. Therefore he said, you are not all clean. So after he had washed their feet and had taken his garments and was set down again, he said unto them, know you what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and you say, Well, for so I am. If then your Lord and Master have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. Verily, verily, I say unto you, The servant is not greater than his Lord, neither he that is sent greater than he that sent him. Whew. All right. Now then, Jesus washed the feet of the disciples. What's he doing? He's getting them ready for the journey. Number one, he's, get, he's cleansing them, isn't he? He's cleansing them. Let me tell you what. He already, he cleansed them. And when he, what he did, what he did, when he died, when he suffered all those things, when he bar was buried and resurrected, he cleansed you and I. He gave, I mean, he took the sin of the world upon himself, amen? Just as that sacrificial lamb, the priest would lay, they would take two lambs, okay? And they would lay their hands on one, and they would transfer the sin of the people to that lamb, and then they would kill that lamb, and then they would set the other one free to run loose in the wilderness. And that represents you and I, amen? So he became that sacrificial lamb. 
Amen. That spotless lamb. Amen. And when he died at the cross, amen, he took all the sin, the shame, the, all the, you know, the condemnation upon himself. He was that sacrificial lamb. And we were turned loose, free, and clean from the sin issue. Right? Okay. So now we can say this is what he was doing. Symbolically, he was showing them that they are now clean. Okay? And they can, they can take this journey. And they can ex exceed, exceed, excel in this journey, right? And they can do what he's called them to do. Amen? So that's these feet. This speaks of the truth. All right? All right? Um, so we find here that Jesus has already he cleansed them. And he has cleansed us. All right? In the sacrifice that he made. So um, that's what I want you to see as far as the feet, the shoes, it all, you know, we find it all as one complete package there but this word when we look at this word all right i uh, say it, it's 50 uh, 52 66 all right um we find that it comes out from the word 52 65 which speaks of a sandal okay all that thing works together okay so i want to turn to acts chapter 12 all right and we find that Peter is in prison. All right. And it says, And when Herod would have brought it forth the same night, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers bound with two chains. And the keepers before the door kept the prison. So it sounds like he was um, pretty secured, wasn't he? <laughs> in, in chains and between the guards, right? The soldiers. And behold, the angel of the Lord came upon him, and a light shined in the prison. He smote Peter on the side, raised him up, saying, Arise quickly, and his chains fell from off his hands. And the angel said unto him, Gird thyself. Now, where did we hear that? <laughs> Way back when we read back in the New Old Testament, right? Gird yourself, bind on thy sandals. And so he did. And he said to him, unto him, Cast thy garment about thee, and follow me. And he went out and followed him, and wist not that it was true, which was done by the angel, but thought he saw a vision. <laughs> and when they were past the first and the second ward, they came unto the iron gate that leadeth unto the city, which openeth to them of his own accord. And they went out and passed through one street, forthwith the angel departed from him. And when Peter was come to himself, <laughs> Duh, the light bulb came on. Wait a minute. I'm out of prison. I'm no longer chained. I'm no longer between the two guards. I have walked out. God has delivered. When he was come to himself, he said, Now I know of a surety that the Lord hath sent his angel and hath delivered me out of the hand of Herod and from all the expectation of the people of the Jews. Oh. <laughs> you can read on down and we find out where he comes to the door and he knocks. They don't believe he's really there, do they? <laughs> They don't even believe he's really there. How many times do we pray without believing? How many times do we pray without believing? What I want us to see is the truth. Bind yourself with the garment of truth. With the truth. Amen. Walking in the truth. Walking in the truth. Speaking the words of truth. Amen. He come to his understanding and he realized the truth. I am free. I am free. I am no longer bound, and I'm no longer bound up by Herod, and even the expectation, the people expect him to have to die. <coughs> Can I tell you, Jesus already cleansed us at the cross. And if you listen to people, their expectation is that we still have to die. But when we come to our senses, when we realize that he already provided the sacrifice of himself, he already cleansed us. There is therefore, chapter 8 of Romans, there is therefore now 
No more condemnation. No more separation. He has already, Romans chapter 5, it says he has already made the atonement or reconciled us back to the divine life, who and what he is. We've already been reconciled back to the Father. We already have been made one with him. No more separation. That's what that condemnation means when you read in Romans chapter 8. No more separation. No more condemnation. No more division. He's already reconciled us. We're already won. We already have the victory in Christ Jesus. All right? The old law has already been fulfilled. That's the truth of the matter. It's already been fulfilled. Jesus fulfilled the old law that kept us bound up. Heron. <laughs> he already fulfilled it, completed it. Under that old law is where we find the limitations. Under that old law is where we find death and sickness and heartache and pains and problems and all those things. Amen. The turmoil and all that. That's all under the old law. But Romans 8 also tells me he has, did what? He made a higher law, didn't he? He established a higher law. And he raised us up. When he fulfilled that old law, he then raised us up and seated us in that whole, that higher law, that law of life. Not death, life. The old law was death. Higher law is life in Christ Jesus. He said he has already come to give us life. He came to give us life. He came to give us life and life more abundant. Amen. That's what he came to do. And when he hung on the cross, he said, it is finished. I have completed that that I came to do. It's a finished work. I've done it. Now all you have to do is come to your senses. Remember who the Father is. Remember what he's done for us. He put up his own life into the body of Jesus Christ, into the life of Christ. Yeah, that's who he was. And gave his life. No greater love hath any man but that he lays down his life for the brethren. He showed us his great love in the fact that he laid down his life <clears throat> in Jesus Christ. Amen. In the man Jesus. We find him laying down proving his great love amen. proving that great love that he is amen he walked it out he did it he completed it fulfilled it and we find here even the expectation of the people cannot keep us back any longer couldn't keep him back amen we find that we have been made free from that old law of sin and death and raised up, seated in the heavenly places in Christ. It tells us in Ephesians. Seated in the heavenlies with Christ. Amen. Amen. Whew. Seated in that higher law of life. Life in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right. So I want to turn to Ephesians chapter 6. And we're going to wrap it up. Getting kind of late today. Ephesians chapter 6. Talks about the Christian's armor. We'll start in verse 10. He says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Woo, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. <laughs> Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the strategies or the deceits of the devil. <laughs> All right, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God that you may be able to 
withstand, talks about being fortified, walled up in a stronghold, amen, in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand, therefore, having your loins girt about with truth. This loins right here where we produce, amen, where we produce thoughts, and thoughts produce actions. And having on the breastplate of right useness, righteousness, and your feet, your feet, ooh, shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Ooh, having your feet shod. Ooh, having those shoes on, those truth, being clothed with the truth, walking out the truth, amen, walking out the truth, amen, that the world can see Christ, that they can see God, that they can see the Father, amen. Woo, amen, that's what we're supposed to do. That's what we're supposed to do, walk it out. Amen, walk that journey, walk it out. All right, woo, having our feet shod. All right, with the preparation of the gospel, woo, of peace. And he goes on, above all, taking the shield of faith, but with you shall be able to quench all the fire darts of the wicked. Take the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with prayer and supplication in the spirit. Watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. And that for me, that others may be given unto me. But you see what I'm talking about? You see the word? You see how You see how he brought us in? Amen. When we come back. Amen. When he brought us back. Amen. He clothed us with a garment of truth. That garment of praise. The garment of righteousness. Amen. The truth. Amen. Which makes us free Woo! we are free amen free from Herod free from the expectations of the people free from Egypt amen free from bondage amen no more condemnation hallelujah. Woo! hallelujah praise the Lord and I want you to see that today in our book in this book of, of our prodigal son in the book of Luke 15 amen he already has totally amen taken care of everything amen and provided total restoration for you and I. Amen. He already has. And we find that uh, he's washed our feet. He washed us every whit made whole, every whit complete. We find the ring. We have right and act. We have, what did he say? He, he has, says, you know, back in the Old Testament, he had, had him chisel the word on the stone. Speaking of a stony heart. Amen. And people wouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't, couldn't, wouldn't, couldn't receive. Amen. <laughs> they wouldn't and they couldn't. Amen. But what we find in this, he gets to the New Testament. He talks about he has written. He has written. It's not carved. It's not chiseled. It's not a hard, forceful thing. But he has now written upon the tablets of our heart. Amen. He says the word is nigh you. It's even in your mouth. And in your heart, right? Amen. He's put the word of understanding and the word of truth in us. Amen. It's available. What I'm trying to say, it's available to us at any moment, any time, anywhere. Amen. It's available to us. We have to believe it. Amen. And as we believe it, as we uh, understand it, and we manifest it. Amen. Walking it out. Our feet shod with that preparation. Amen. The more time we spend understanding that word, and the time we stand in, under, you know, send in prayer, that that's um, that's bringing that understanding of who we are. Amen. 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 And talking about being our words, I just want to finish with Proverbs. If you want to turn with me to Proverbs chapter fifteen. Oops. Go back a little bit further. One more verse. I'm gonna throw out that at you. <laughs> Proverbs chapter 15. One interesting thing, because they always talk about the tree of life. Because seven years we, we were kept out whenever man Adam <coughs> decided to believe a lie. <laughs> we find that um, they were kept from the tree of life, right, by the flaming swords. But we find in verse 15, I mean chapter 15, verse 4 of Proverbs, he says, a wholesome tongue. Is what? It's a tree of life. Amen. Woo! So the words that we speak are so powerful. 
the words that we speak. Remember the word? Talks about the word and the understanding in the feet, in the shoes, right? So we have to pay attention. We gird up our minds. Don't allow thoughts of lack or need or worry, uh, confusion. Don't let those things fill our minds. When we find those things trying to take hold, fill our thoughts with words of life. Amen? I will not believe a lie because confusion is a lie. Amen? Amen. Uh, worry is a lie. Fear is a lie. All those things are a lie. Just tell yourself, I will not believe a lie. I will believe the truth. I have a sound mind. I have the mind of Christ. I and my Father are one. One spirit. One life. One spirit cannot be divided. Right? And so, you know, all these things girding up our, our mind. Amen? Filling our mind with the truth so that we manifest it in our lives. Woo, praise the Lord. All right, Pastor G, I believe you have a comment there. Go right ahead. Well, I just...